Hello everyone, I'm glad to have you back. In our last lesson, we looked at the Visual Studio Code interface and we wrote our first script called Hello where we printed our name. This time around, let's go ahead and understand the kinds of data and variable types we can create with Python. So open up Visual Studio Code and I'm going to go to File or jump over here and I'll say New File and I'll just say Variables and Data Types dot py. I'm using .py so Visual Studio Code knows that I'm actually creating a Python file and I'll just drag this over here to the left and let's just add a comment so that we can uh, tell ourselves what we're doing in the future in case we forget. So we're going to be working with variables and data types. So what is the data type, right? So there are different kinds of data. In the real world, we have numbers, we have decimal numbers, and we have text, right? So Python also has its own data types, which it understands. And these are integers, which are positive or negative uh, whole numbers. We have floats, which are precision point numbers. We have booleans, which are true or false values. We have the string data type, which represents a text for characters. Other data types we have include sets, which are used for grouping. We have dictionaries, and we also have lists, which are super duper awesome. We also have complex numbers, which are used for scientific uh, calculations. Now, whenever we create a variable and we want to assign a value to a variable, we use the equal sign, which is called an assignment operator. So let's just add that here. Let's see the equal sign, which is this one, is the assignment. And we've actually used that in our last example. If we look at hello.py, uh, okay, we didn't do that, sorry. So let's go ahead here and uh, let's see an example. If I say age equals 16. 15, right, or whatever. We actually, you see this 15, this 15 right here, that's the equal sign. And basically what it's doing, it's assigning the integer 15 to a variable called age. Basically it's creating a space in our computer's memory called age and it's assigning or mapping a number, which is an integer as 15. An integer can be positive or negative. It could actually be negative 15. That's what an integer is. So let's just go ahead and close this. And let's just add that comment right here. An integer, or int for short, is a positive or negative whole number. So an example of an integer, we can actually uh, do things like 12. We can see uh, 24. We can see minus 3. And that's it. So let's actually declare in an integer called, let's see, account balance. And let me assign a value to say uh, 3000, like so. So what I just did right there, we created an integer variable because it's actually a uh, whole number. We can actually ch turn this to negative 3000, that's my account balance, yeah, right, like so. So let's also actually move on to a next data type. Let's look at a string. Now, strings are enclosed. Strings are a group of characters, right? And we also have another data type here called a car. A character is a single string. A string is a representation of text within your programming language. So for instance, if I say name and I assign, uh, I use double quotes, and I say Mahmood, like so. I just created a string called name and I assigned it to this uh, string of data here. A single letter, if I set that to the letter, say, uh, capital L, this is actually a character because I only have one of this. So a group of characters is a string, a string, and a car is a single 
character. So this is an example of a string. And right here is an example of a car. Now strings, we can use single or double quotes for strings. So uh, we can use, use a single or double quotes for strings. So a single quote is this. You can actually use this to represent, oh, that's double quotes. Or we can use double quotes. That's, this is the double quotes for strings. So if I go here and I say name underscore or surname, and I see the value show I, right? So uh, I'm actually using double quotes, which is from a habit. I can actually still represent a string with a double uh, single quote as well. So let's go ahead and see how we can uh, work with this. Let's say, for instance, let's look at an example. And uh, in this example, we're going to be adding adding variables, right? So let's just scroll down here and I'll just go down here. So let's say I have a, uh, I already have a variable called age, which I declared right here. Okay, uh, we actually, uh, let's, let's declare a variable called age. So let's say age equals 25. And let's create another variable called in five years. And we'll call that variable five, like so. If I want to add these two, I'm going to create a new variable called total and use the assignment operator and add age plus in five years. Now, each time you create a variable, Python is going to give you a hint or a suggestion that it actually knows that variable because it's in your computer memory. So when you start typing that variable, it's going to come up as a suggestion. So right here, we can actually see the variable total is showing up. If I type age, uh, years. If I type age, well, we actually see age kind of show up right here. And it's actually very cool because we could quickly type it. So let's print total. And I'll just press the return key. If I save this script and I go to run and run without debugging, we should actually see the results in our terminal. We just actually started this, so our terminal is taking our time to load. And we can actually see the sum of the age here, the total. So we're adding age, which is 25 plus in five years, you know, uh, so in five years is going to be 30. That's just what this um, piece of code is actually saying. So that, let's actually see a float value. So let's say uh, example of a float and IE uh, decimal. So let's think about something that's precise. Let's say uh, millimeter value. So we can actually do something like 0 0.00234. Now this is actually an example of a float. We could actually say uh, 23.45 as well. This is actually going to go because it's actually a floating point uh, number. So that's an example of a floating point number. And it's a variable with a uh, decimal point. So I'll just say variable with a decimal point. And there, that's our example of a uh, float. Let's see an example of a Boolean. A Boolean is a, uh, these are true or false values. So Booleans are true or false values. And let's see examples of Booleans. So let's say uh, is eating, right? We'll check if someone is eating. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say true. Uh, we're going to check if someone is sleeping. We're going to assign that value to false. Now, the reason why this is in capital letters is because it's named after the mathematician George Boole. So, because it's someone's name, the you know Python creators thought you know well let's just save this as capital. 
just to save that person's name. So uh, we can actually ask Python what kind of a data type has been assigned into computer memory. So let's see, let's see, checking data types. All right, so I'm, I'm just careful not to. Uh, so let's say we want to find out what data type this total is right here. What data type is total? So we could just say type and in a parentheses total. Each time you're working with a method, it's actually, you're actually going to see parentheses. Just like we have the print method in our hello example, the type is also a function. And this is actually going to return the type of data we're working with. So let's just see. Uh, tells us the data type we are working with. So that's what it does. And to see this, I actually need to print the type of. So I'm just going to say print and I'm going to copy all this, cut this, and I'm going to paste this like so because I want to see the results on the console. So I'll save that and let's quickly go to run and run without debugging. And my terminal is kind of hitting. And we can actually see here it says class integer. So basically, it actually sees that total is an integer right so so we're getting print total and we're actually seeing that total is an integer right here so we're actually getting that first result and this one we're actually getting this result let's see if this works so because we're using the terminal i can use cls to clear the screen in case it's actually filled with a lot of that junk and information you don't need. So finally, what we are going to actually do before we round this up is to see how we can change one data type to another data type. Now, as an example, uh, and that's done using casting. So let's say uh, casting example. Now let's create a number. So I'm just going to say num equals 23.984 which is a float and let's create another one called num2 which is going to be an integer because it's a, post, a whole number so I have num2 and now I'm going to say num sum because I want to add these two numbers or let's multiply them so I'll just say uh, the solution is going to be equal to num multiplied by num2 so basically I'm multiplying these two numbers and I want to print out solution Oops like so right so this is going to print out the result of that calculation so if i save that and go to run and i drag up my terminal i can actually see the result the result is 700 and 479.68 and lots of zeros and then a six like so so how do i change this into an integer because right now what it's doing is giving me the results as a floating point because i'm multiplying a integer by float and the result is a float. I want my results in an integer because I'm scared of these decimal points. I don't like them. So what we're actually going to do is to say, we're going to do what is called casting. And to do that, I'm just going to say int. Uh, we're going to call an int function. And then you actually see it says converts a number or string to an integer. So each time we call the int function, it's going to convert a number or a string to an integer. We have a number called solution right here, a float called solution. I want to convert that float to an integer. So I'm going to say int and then call the int method. So here we're just going to say solution like so. And if we want to see this result, we could just pass everything into a print method. Basically, I want to print out the results right here. So I'll just open up a curly brace and my closing uh, parentheses. And if I save this now, and I'm going to use a shortcut, I'm going to say Control F5. And now we can actually see it has changed this gentleman into an int. So the first print solution is actually for 79.6 with lots of zeros. And then the second print solution is actually going to be this value. So hopefully this gives you a very, very rough and broad overview of what variables are, what kinds of data uh, uh, 
includes it it comes with python sorry and then we already touched on an integer float boolean strings and characters we haven't even scratched the surface because we have whole lots of them but just know that each of these variables and data types have a lot of methods which you can actually use to change how the function can change that behavior and we'll see more of that in the course thank you very much for watching you guys now if you want to have access to the uh, work files because we actually have a working file now i'll actually uh, be sending you a link to the github repository and once you, you need to have a github account once you set up your github account you could actually uh, go over to code and you could just clone the zip file this will give you access to everything uh, we have been working with so i haven't pushed this to github yet i'll do that and i'll see you guys in the next lesson and i'll make the link available on the YouTube page. Thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.